Hi, uh, we have uh, Kushal Jain with us who has secured rank 40 uh, in CSE 2021 and uh, uh, let's uh, start this. Uh, Kushal, uh, tell us something about your, uh, yourself, uh, the background. Sir, I belong from Jabalpur, Madhya Pradesh. I went uh, to RVC Bangalore for my engineering and information science and engineering. After that, I was uh, recruited by Microsoft. So I worked there for one and a half years and from there I started my preparation civil services. This was my fourth attempt, fourth interview. Fourth attempt, fourth interview. Yes, sir. Yes. And this time I've secured. How did you stay motivated uh, four years? This is what a lot of people have a problem with. Yes, sir. But I always looked at it as a very temporary phase because once you achieve something, then it's always a no, but pleasure. Going to yeah. interview thrice, uh, you'll yeah. always feel like, you know, I'm not getting that final name in the list. Yeah. So, motivation would have been a big challenge. Right? Correct. At this point, then your family and friends come into picture. So, I think they always supported me that it's just minor modifications that you need to do. Otherwise, you are on track. So, I think and one that and second, because this process is such that I never had more than two months for the next exam. Uh, that so, was it was coming. a continuous cycle. Yes. So, there was not much time to think about all of this. And so the I difference between that, last year's marks and this year's would what be? 50? 100? Yeah, around I scored 938 last year hmm. and this time I have 1002. 1002, so, so seven, uh, 68, 60, 60, 66 marks, marks, right, yeah. right, 64 yeah. marks, yeah. right. So, uh, you are a first generation officer from the family? Yes. Right, how, how does that feel? Oh, it feels nice, it, the family is really happy, right. so I think that feels nice. Where were you when the results came? I was in my hostel only right. when the results came. Though, because I had this superstition that when I check my result from the hostel, it doesn't really go well. Right, so, right. I stepped out in the park. So, the, right. I was in the park actually. When, 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 you, when you checked yeah, out the yeah, results. Yeah, yeah. No, you will always be worried because you have done this thrice Correct. Uh, after the interviews. Correct. Right, right. Yes, okay. So, uh, sociology is your optional. Yes. Sir. Right. And uh, this was, uh, what do you call, you have not changed optional or anything. No, I have. A lot of people when fourth attempt and all by then, they feel that, you know, optional is to blame or uh, they always fiddle with that. Right. So, uh, I, I, I look at uh, various phases of the examination. Now, you have cleared pre four times. What works for you? Sir, I think I have a very simple strategy to follow in prelims, and uh, which I followed for my first attempt. And I don't change that. The, uh, the basic uh, in it is that I have divided all my syllabus into the time that has been provided to me. So, for example, my first attempt, I had around 10 months to prepare. So, I took any coaching schedule, which was there. Uh, which had all the weekly uh, material that was to be followed, all the weekly syllabus that was to be covered. I covered that in that week only and after that I gave the sectional test that was there. So after uh, giving the sectional test and uh, after doing 3-4 sectional tests, when I was comfortable that I can give a full length paper from that topic, I used to give a full length paper and uh, I used to revise it also so that all my faults that I, that I did in that paper will never repeat themselves. So, revising the test as in you yes, go sir. back to the test yes, once you have yes, solved sir. it. Yes sir. What I was the exercise? What, what do you do when you go back to a test? So, when I go back to a test, I divide it into two questions, uh, two, uh, three parts actually. The first part was the questions that I knew and I was able to reach the answer with the present knowledge that I had. I used to revise them lesser because that was already understood by my brain. The second part was the questions where I didn't have the knowledge but somehow I reached the answer. I used to read the theory again for these questions, uh, the explanation that is given in the answer solution key. I used to read that and then I used to revise the logic that I used to uh, go because in the prelims there will be many questions in which we have to apply this calculated logic. So, I used to revise that and third the questions that I didn't know and couldn't really get to the answer, I used to revise it from the theory again. I think there is one more category, the questions that you got right by luck. Yeah, I uh, used to uh, keep them in the second category. Second category, yeah, yeah. right. Because I think luck is a factor when you Correct. are looking at prelims. Correct. Right? Yeah. Did you have your own notes for pre? Yes, sir. I made my notes, but I also ensured that my notes were continuously updated. So, hmm. these were online notes mostly. So, I used to update them as Ever and note. when. Yeah, I used uh, one note for one Microsoft. Note, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, I used to update The Microsoft uh, yes. legacy, right? Yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. yes. So yeah, I I did that. Yes. What is uh, let's let's take a topic like uh, yes, freedom struggle or uh, okay. 1942. How, how would your notes for prelims be like? So in history uh, per se, uh, we read spectrum, right? So in spectrum, I uh, what I did was uh, as I was reading a page, there was one or two key information, not more than that in a okay. page. Otherwise, your notes will all be stacked up. So uh, only one or two information. I used to just write it above the page only in spectrum. Hmm. So, whenever I am revising, I used to only revise that. that. Right. I should, so, every page had just one or two information for me. And they also have that summary page after every yeah, chapter. Yeah, that can also be followed. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
so you do not have a separate notes which was extracted from a standard material like lakshmi kant this lakshmi kant with color coded content correct for lakshmi kant and for uh, for polity and for history i did that but for geography as well as economics because these require some conceptual understanding hmm. for those i made my own notes okay uh, so uh, csat was never a problem yes, it has become yes, a problem for a lot of people correct. now yes sir uh, we have people who are scoring 110 120 in gs but yes, yes, borderline yes, in csat yes, right yes, uh, so uh, test solving how, how many tests do you usually do between prelims and uh, before prelims sir i initially followed in my first session because i had a lot of time i followed a 100 test approach 100 tests yes where i That's used 10000 questions correct where i used to give 100 tests and then i used to revise them so it's it's actually 200 tests that i'm doing all right 100 tests this which is in a span of 3 months no no in a span of 10 months in the first attempt right yes sir but after that because i i never had time so i only used to follow one test series whichever i am following right. entire test series because uh, when you give sectional and full length your entire syllabus gets covered from one institute any institute you can follow and then i used to revise them so right. around 35 tests were there so 70 tests i used to take yes okay um, do you diversify sources of test like when you do 100 tests out do you try to go for diversity of test like you know different institutes different sources is that something that you do No sir I genuine I I generally believe in uh, first I I used to do my research which institute to follow so that can change over time over it's not time. that one institute I'm st- I'm I'm stagnated to I used to follow any uh, every other institute that I fo- I thought that is aligned with the UPSC's pattern because right. it also keeps changing, keeps changing. Right? so based on that I used to follow one test series religiously right, right. yeah uh, have you followed uh, Shankar's environment book that's something that everybody follows have you read that yes sir I have read that yeah. book yes right uh, this uh, attempt ratio in uh, pre uh, how many questions do you attempt sir i attempt on the higher side i attempt around 90 to 92 questions that's very high yes right? sir yes and your success ratio what is your ratio uh, score in pre uh, sir uh, in my first attempt i got 114 marks okay. then in my second attempt i got around 100 marks i'm not very sure third attempt i cleared forest also right so i got again a, a higher range and this attempt there yet to be released right so so basically you have uh, 10 marks above the cut off correct so you don't waste one month speculating whether i'll clear or not i, no. I think that's a very uh, important yeah. factor in me yes yes it is a, it is a, it is a very human emotion to do human that. emotion to do but uh, because now uh, last two cycles have been very cramped as com- as compared to the other cycles so i think even in this cycle right e- even though we have 100 days but i am assuming that result will again take around 20 25 days right right so i my suggestion would be you have to just start somewhere whichever no, topic anyway you, you like, can't do anything yeah, that will change yeah, what you have done correct right? correct so whichever topic you like you start from that so these uh, initial phases that anxiety will also reduce because you're doing a topic of your preference and your uh, preparation will come on track current affairs for prelims what was your approach self note making new trading what yes sir, first the first thing was reading newspaper i used to do that every day uh after do you make notes also every day from newspapers no from uh, note note uh, from newspaper i i uh, didn't make any notes but what i used to do was i used to uh, go into any uh, online modules which are there uh, so uh, in that uh, there are uh, every day there are five questions from prelims uh, from prelims point of view right. from the current affairs uh, that right. is com- uh, coming from the newspaper i used to solve that and uh, one or two mains uh, aspect questions that are there from that newspaper only so how much time do you spend on a newspaper in a day So it kept reducing as right. i progressed initially it would have been 2 3 hours yes yes, yes yes now now yes. what what does arrange now i think uh, around an hour is enough for uh, scanning the entire newspaper and t- uh, picking out all the important articles that are there from upsc's point have of you shifted from hindu to delhi times already <laughs> no, no sir not, not yet, yet because now, now yet. i don't think there's that honest to read hindu and indian express anymore because yes, you're more an true. aspirant yeah, yeah. <laughs> that that's true it's not a very fun thing to do anyway right? yeah but i haven't even read newspapers <laughs> in the yeah. last two weeks right yeah, yeah. okay so uh, this is more or less uh, with respect to pre you have cleared uh, four pre with the uh, forest cut off one of the years yes, also yes. right moving on to mains uh, let's say that if you were writing mains this year and there are 100 days what would your strategy be so again i would follow a very simple strategy in mains i used to take the syllabus that is there so for example gs1 gs2 gs3 there are 20 subheads the bullet points that are given in the syllabus right i used to make a again a microsoft word document i used to open and i used to write all the subheads there then under every subheads i used to uh, go and check all the previous year question papers and every question would obviously be under some subhead from right. that uh, paper right so i used to write it down there hmm. that uh, this year this question came from this subhead 
and uh, I used to do this for seven or eight. So a trend years. analysis. Trend analysis, first of all. Trend analysis is also what are the areas to focus under that subhead. Right. I, I keep telling this to people. You know, society accounts for seventy-five marks, Correct. and still people spend one, one, two weeks on world history, which does not even. Correct. Have so you a have return. to do that uh, cost benefit. There has to be a logic. Too. Yeah, there right. has to be some logic behind it. After I have uh, divided all the questions, then I used to understand what kind of questions are asked. And then I used to go back to my static course uh, syllabus and I used to again put everything that I knew in three to four pages under every subhead. Right. So if you do this, you will actually end up with a 80 pages note Perfect. Of, of GS1, GS2, GS3. And you revise that a hundred times. You can revise that as many times. Right. And this will not have any irrelevant facts that you cannot reproduce on the final day. So do you update this every year? Yeah, I used to update it every year based on what kind of questions are being asked, based on any other uh, fact that uh, some reports that have come across. So you you kept updating what you had made in the first yes, year or yes. uh, you, that, that's what you do? Yeah, yeah right. I, I kept updating. Right. So GS 1, 2, 3, I used to follow this strategy only right. and apart from that, this is the static part. For the question answer, for the papers part, I used to take any other, any one uh, coaching uh, test series, entire test series and as I was uh, covering my subheads, suppose six subheads I have covered mm. uh, in, in three days. So then I used to go and check uh, which uh, paper has covered those six subheads right. and I used to solve that paper. Right. So then what happens is I have done my static syllabus as well as my uh, paper, pa right. paper part of it. Right. So I have the practice of uh, writing that in two pages right. because that is what is actually being replicated right? Right. and right. that is uh, what is going to go to the examiner. So I used to do this and I used to brainstorm also. So for example, in my sectional test, if I'm solving, so I don't do, I, I didn't uh, do that three hour writing approach in the sectional test. Right. What I used to do was, I used to take that uh, first question and I used to brainstorm what I will write in introduction. I used to just scribble right. just next to it. Introduction, all the points, uh, brief points and then conclusion. And if any diagram, I, I would draw. Oh, did then you have a compendium of diagrams or something? Uh, so can you please repeat? Compendium of diagrams, like a collection of diagrams that you could Yeah, use. yeah, I, I used to have. The, the, this will go in your three to four pages notes. Of Geography, you have all the diagrams, yeah, yeah, IR. Yeah. Right. Everything, everything. If you think that there's a scope of drawing a diagram, please do. Pre-created. Right? Yes, yes, yes. No, the chances of you yeah. coming up with a diagram in the interview, in the mains is... No, that is not recommended. Almost impossible. Because, yeah, because then uh, relevance would be less. No, you're already under pressure. You have yeah. to write an answer in seven minutes. Correct, correct. Right, it's not possible. Yeah, so in mains, please don't uh, innovate then and there. Otherwise, just just practice so much that uh, you actually... And I, I personally feel yeah. that mains is relatively more predictable compared to prelims. Because there correct. is a limitation for UPSC to yes, complicate yes, things. Very true, very true. Right. And, and previous year questions do repeat in repeat, mains. Right. And, and there's a consistent and, and, I, and I think uh, compared to pre our chances of uh, hitting questions are higher in with mains definitely for a test definitely, series definitely, definitely. we had a, done an analysis we don't hit uh, exactly the question but mm. themes we do hit like, yes you know, yes right? yes because uh, there are limited number, limited of, number of themes in right? prelims the syllabus is very vast in mains it's concise no, I, I keep telling people that you know if you solve 30 questions of IR correct at least 3 out of that 4 questions will definitely hit. Yeah, yeah this time this time uh, I mean the time that I gave I remember uh, clearly that A UK US was from Shankar's. Right, area. we had and, asked. And the same question was asked. I wrote the same model solution and right. I hope it has fetched me. Now you are sitting here, that means something correct. has worked. Something right. has worked, correct. Right. So I think if you practice that, first brainstorm through sectional papers, then every four to five days write one paper in the exam hall settings. Jayant right. had said something very interesting last year. Mm -hmm. He said after every test, he used to do a very extensive post test analysis. Yes, yes. What yes, could yes, I have correct. done more in this answer? So this is uh, this I used to do in the brainstorming session, brainstorming where, session, where I'm scribbling the answer. But then what I would used to do is I would read the model answer. So two things will happen. A, the revision of theory would happen. And B, I would know that whether I have actually attempted the soul of the question correctly. Right, right. Which is important. So, uh, and if if, the, if my scribble, scribbled points are part of the solution as well, right. I thought that, okay, I'm going right. right. I'm aligned. Correct. So, in, the, in this sense, I used to align my strategy uh, to write a very model answer kind of an answer. And once this practice has been done, then every four to five days, I used to write one paper. Right. And this I used to do, that one paper every four to five days was an actual set. Three hours. Three hours. Yes, okay. yes. So, right. that, so, that all this accumulated knowledge. I was checking myself whether I can do this in three hours. So very likely most themes you have gone through multiple iterations before you yes. write. Yes, yes. So that reinforces in your head. That Yes. So right. uh, because uh, on the final day, whatever is in your mechanical memory, only that thing will come out right. in the pressure and it's, the stress. It's muscle memory. It's, it's muscle memory. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So these facts, if you have written somewhere and you've practiced it, only then they are going to come out. Right. So I think this helped me in my uh, revision as well as my uh, final. Concise day. notes. Yes. Uh, scribbling. Scribbling. Uh, yeah. Sectional test. Mm. Full test. Full this, test. This is something that yes. I'll do. Yes. Right. Uh, if I go paper wise, 
paper one is something where uh, people find it difficult to score what was your strategy for paper one so i divided paper one into history geography society first right. of all uh, for society because my option was sociology it was relatively easier though i uh, made sure to uh, differentiate a gs answer from a sociology, sociology answer. answer so i used to follow normal uh, so, uh, society Keywords. notes for gs1 not my optional notes right. or definitely that helped yeah, we, sure. we have seen this happen uh, geography optional students getting very low marks in paper one correct, correct. because they write geography yes, answers in paper yes. one so right. that differentiation needs to happen uh, so for society I used to do that, for geography again I used to do a lot of diagram practice. Did you make a collection of keywords for society? Uh, I, I think by default in, in that came because you, right. uh, my optional was such. Right. So I think that must have happened. How did you deal with the cryptocurrency question? Uh, can you repeat the question? The cryptocurrency question. No, no, what was the question? Uh, the question was uh, implication of cryptocurrency on society or something. Correct. So right. uh, yeah, yeah. So that helped Because that was a paper 3 question. That was. But it was also a society question because uh, the risk associated with it is similar to the gambling risk that right, we are taking, right, right? right? So whatever are the cons of gambling are actually the cons of cryptocurrency, cryptocurrency because right. it, it can be an addiction. Hmm. Then obviously because uh, we say that uh, uh, like privacy issues are really right. there, right? So anything uh, can be a social issue as well because if a person is losing a lot of money in cryptocurrency then it will reflect in the domestic violence aspect as well. Right, right, right. So if you connect to that then it becomes a society. So you question. have to think from a societal perspective correct, and connect correct, it. Right. Correct. So the, I, the paper was different from the previous year's this year correct. society. Yeah, yeah. Right. It was different. It was right. little uh, unconventional. Unconventional to yeah, be yeah, saying, yeah. right. Yeah. Geography, uh, you have physical geography, environmental geography and uh, human geography. Human geography. geography. Correct. How, how do you approach? So physical geography, I used to uh, made this thumb, make this thumb rule that I have to draw a diagram. Perfect. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. So so if if, if uh, there is a volcano question, I will draw. Draw a diagram. I mean, and you have practiced also, that before. Correct. Yeah. That everything is uh, in my practice. It is. I'm nothing not is uh, random. New. Yeah. I'm not doing anything new. It is everything is calculated and practiced. Just the thing is, you have to use those diagrams based on the relevancy. Hmm. It's not that if anything in the volcano comes, I'll show how volcano is formed. No, right. that shouldn't be the approach. But if you have those diagrams uh, ready, this helps. And uh, especially in geography, uh, you if you have not made your diagrams, then it will be very difficult to make those diagrams there. Yeah, they might be in your memory, they impossible. might not come out. Yeah. Especially if you are from a subject which does not involve a lot of uh, diagrams. Correct, correct. Anthro people may be able to draw yes, or uh, yes. geography people, but yes. socio people won't be able yeah, to do, correct. do it. So right. that practice needs to happen. Right. Whenever there's a chance of drawing a world map or India map, try using that. Right. It helps in a depiction of. And it does not have to be perfect. I think that's another feeling correct, that people correct. have yes, that yes, you know yes. I have to draw a perfect India map. No, 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 no. It, it has, has to be representative. It, just, it should just look like a map right. from some angle. Right. Yeah, I think that helps helped in uh, physical geography. And uh, any interlinkage of current affairs in geography. So. Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, my notes always used to get updated from current affairs. Right. So for this, you can uh, read your Mains 365. Right, right. That is a great source to right. update your current no, affairs. I, I feel Mains 365 as a source is difficult to revise multiple times. But Correct. if you extract the essence Correct. of it, then, then, yeah, then it works. It helps. Right. So I always used to have short notes of Mains 365. Mains 365. This because as such, it was 500, 600 pages. No, no, that is not possible. Mm -hmm. So whenever you're reading, so suppose there are 10 points that are there. Whatever five points that you think you can remember, just track that. Mm -hmm. And just write those one or two in, in one or two lines. And I, I think now they have started the summary page after every chapter now. I think that is also uh, something no, new. I, I haven't uh, right, gone right, through right, that. Right, right. But yeah, so I used to do this. So in my first attempt, I made extensive notes out of Main 365. Every every uh, every topic, then in bracket, in uh, I used to write, if, suppose, polity I am doing, right? So if there is election, election is my topic. So then I used to write all the articles that are associated to with all the acts. So uh, in everything, so in whenever I'm revising, all these things are getting inside my head. Right, right. So then in my subconscious memory, then this will come out. In and also side. interlinkage between uh, geography in paper one and environment in paper definitely, three. Right? Definitely. Those that kind of things also yeah, happen. You cannot separate geography and environment. Right, that right. is, yeah. Both Did you study world history and post independence? <laughs> <laughs> See, honestly, I only, uh, I had these short notes. I don't know from where they came from. There was one by uh, Tanmay, rank 10. Uh, there was a 30 page note. Which year? I think last to last year. No. Anudeep had a... Uh, yeah, I, no, those there, were, there are some uh, short yeah. notes running around. Yeah, yeah. So, right. these were like, yeah. 20, 30 those, pages. Not like that. that. I only did that. that honestly, right. I only did that. And uh, you have to analyze. No, I, I feel either you get it or you won't get it. There's no in yeah. between there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. You can say that. But uh, but all the key topics that you should know, right. world wars you should know, 
American Revolution, French Revolution, French Revolution. interwar years. All this is are mandatory. Right. Otherwise, then uh, if, if it if, comes, uh, if South American Revolution comes, then you if can. If a Malay Peninsula decolonization correct. comes, you can't. Then do you anything cannot. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so you should only read all the basics. And post independence, I feel in some way or the other, we have all read it because it's it's an extension <laughs> of modern history or society. Correct. Correct. Because correct. Uh, gender, population, mm-hmm. pollution, right, uh, like and poverty. Yes, yes. Overlaps. And even in economics, we read five year plans and right. all of that. So I think that is uh, somewhere it is somewhere covered. Somewhere we have done it. So. And if it's a bouncer, it's a bouncer for everyone. For everyone, right? That's true. Culture. Uh, culture, sir. Uh, I think Nitin Singhania. Yeah, Nitin Singhania. So Nitin Singhania, I never read the full. It's a little book. bulky. No, no. So I never opened that book mm. because I think cost to benefit is very less very again. Less. So uh, there are short notes from that book that is available will, online. Right. So just download that. That is uh, that is very short actually. Uh, did you pre-create uh, diagrams and maps for uh, culture? No, not for culture. Not for culture. No, not for culture. Right. So I think yeah, culture aspect I only did that. So uh, suppose if there's a question on temples, hmm. then those diagrams need to be made. Right. Otherwise, uh, just don't stuff. Pe- people use it as fillers reason. now. You know, yeah. uh, marking the major uh, movements across the country, and th- that takes half a page. Right, then you yeah. have to write that much lesser. Correct, right? correct. So no, no. It's so a filler. Yeah, right. It's a filler. So don't use diagrams as an escape to writing right, uh, writing right. answers. Use a diagram as a depiction of what you have written. Or Something which will enrich what you are writing. Correct, which will enrich. Because uh, at the end of the day, examiner is going through multiple copies. Definitely. So they will always know that what uh, what more could have Whether been Whether you are wasting their time or not. Yes, yes, definitely. Right. So, I mean, uh, that is a little counterproductive approach. Modern history extension of pre. Nothing definitely, else. Definitely. Nothing no, new. Uh, one thing that was different was uh, modern history. Now the pattern is that a little analytical approach is coming. Hmm. So, for example, uh, there was the one question that all the constructive work done by Gandhiji during uh, hmm. uh, these. Hmm. So, when we study, we only study all the Champaran, Kera, Everything. all of these. But the constructive work we often you tend have to, to pull out. Yeah. So, hmm. you have to be a little analytical in that hmm. way. So, hmm. that is a little difference in prelims and means. No, one Gandhi related question is almost uh, common almost every yes, year. Yes, right? yes, definitely. Right. So, uh, moving on to paper two, right? Uh, polity, one twenty-five marks. Uh, what works for you? And I think you have done reasonably well in uh, paper two compared yes, to the other three. Yes. Right. Sir. What works for you? Sir, I think first is uh, for international relations that uh, forms across fifty marks or fifty more, marks. More than that. Yeah. Four questions, two ten Four marks, questions. two fifty yeah, marks. Yeah, fifty marks. So I think your main thesis five is more than enough. Right. It covers more more often than not everything and the test series that you're and the answer writing that and the doing. answer writing that you're doing. I mm-hmm. think international relations that is enough. Maps so, in IR. Uh, maps in IR again from the world map or if suppose in India Israel question comes. Right. Now where's the maps required right, in this? Right, because right. are you di- are you going to draw Israel? No, I, I, I think if you are as- answering a question on Abraham Accord, you'll probably draw the region and probably map. yeah. Then UAE you can. And or if South you're Asia, if you're drawing right. if you're writing a question about India's neighborhood, then definitely, then definitely you have. Right. But you have to decide on the question. But I, I think some of these could be pre-created. Your doc and your yeah, yes, that needs those to things be, yeah, be pre-created. Yeah. So that string of pearls you you can do. Right. So all this you have to do it in your notes. Right. Just don't go and do it on the final day because then it will be haphazard. No, what I understand is that one neighborhood. One China or USA, yes. one organization and one diaspora type uh, something correct, like that. Correct, correct. So yeah, yeah, if you do the trend analysis, this is what comes out. Right, of it. right. So I think you can actually prepare on those lines. Those lines, right. Ki, uh, so uh, in, in your uh, diaspora kind of a thing, you can have some data ready. Right. The remittance, the diaspora. Important personalities. Important personalities. Yeah, what, uh, the, the one or two major examples of what has been done by the diaspora. So that you can prepare. In your organizations, you only have to prepare those which are in, in, in news, news. Yeah. Right. which you can do from mainstream 65, right? right. So uh, that part, so this is a very uh, uh, predictable area. Yeah, Relatively. predictable area. It's a, re- it's a predictable. And for the rest of the polity part, I think again, if you divide your uh, syllabus into subheads and then if you, so for example, there's a uh, subhead o- on parliament, right? right. So uh, then you have to approach it like what are the issues in parliamentary proceedings and a little analytical angles. Paul, Lakshmi Khan definitely helps. But uh, another trend that I'm seeing now is that people are interlinking current affairs in the introduction itself. They are setting a context, definitely, rather than defining. Right? Definitely, yeah, yeah. So these two approaches can be uh, conveniently. Abhinav has yeah. extensively used quotes. Uh, I saw some of his IR answers where you know started with uh, Jay Shankar's quote and ended with uh, Prime Minister Modi's quote. Oh, okay. Right. So uh, yeah. some trends are changing. Yeah, yeah. So uh, all this you ha- you can do by looking at the copies. Copies, honestly. Right. So uh, he has also done something very really nice, uh, like you know basics. Hmm. For every polity question, there's a table, and uh, inside that, he has written the constitutional articles relevant to the uh, correct, question. Correct, right. correct. So this this I used to do in my notes making. Notes, right. So 
whenever as i told you suppose i'm writing election so that article of election commission of india or any representation of people act all this would be mentioned so in revision right. i used to go through all of and, and, and i think in polity also parliament panchayat federalism correct elections correct these are very repetitive things yeah this right. you will anyway Gated. realize when you are actually reading these questions right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah this so, is a very uh, social justice and governance and this this part is something that that's a tricky part tricky part because questions are coming as such that there are huge questions mm. and you will never know which part to focus right right so in that 2020 2020 yeah, that correct, was correct, crazy correct uh, four four five five line questions right. and the conventional approach of breaking the questions into parts is not happening not happening there because it's a quote based question or a statement based question it's difficult to even understand what are you trying to ask correct correct so in that sense you have to practice more Hmm. and uh, you can definitely follow what's your approach for such a question like you know long statement correct so sir in uh, in short questions my approach was break the questions right. uh, sir divide into parts address parts and the more. question but in these question i used to give a little at least 5 seconds more to understand the crux of crux the statement of what and is the essence correct what is the essence and then the last statement would have been the question that they right. are asking so i used to uh, merge this crux with the last statement and then i used to address that part rather than breaking this long statement into parts so i used to just understand the crux and then write the answer to that in polity there is this debate uh, are the questions statics or are the questions dynamic questions static questions asked from dynamic uh, themes i think uh, as you said static questions are being asked from dynamic themes because themes are limited right because they have to ad- uh, adhere to the syllabus right and you have read all the subheads so and the state know. relations federalism these correct. things have to be asked correct these and these are all part of the syllabus right. these are nothing new but what you can do is you can enrich your answers with the current uh, last year affairs. one question i feel bad we did not ask was the uh, women representation in judiciary i don't right. know how we missed that because that yes, was yes, all yes. out there right? yes yes right. so in these type of questions you can definitely use graphs graphs where where you can show how this has changed suppose if you have to uh, talk you have used graphs in some of our tests also you yeah have, yeah you have done I, that I, yeah yeah right. i do that so uh, for example if ever uh, there is a question about women representation in politics i definitely uh, draw that uh, i used to draw that graph of 16th lok sabha represent Representation, 15th Lok Sabha. I think that more often than not will fetch a no, half a I, point. No, I personally feel that you know it breaks the monotony of the value. Correct. Right. Correct. You know he's seeing all text and all of a sudden okay there's a graph. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. This can so be. So this is a uh, paper two, right? Yes. Paper three. Nobody is scoring. Okay. I yeah. think uh, you have done re- reasonably well, but compared to your other three papers, uh, this has yes. not done as well. Yes. Right. Sir. Yes. Sir. Uh, I think paper three is very dynamic. but again as i said if you break it into subheads you'll realize that there are some recurring themes for example disaster management uh, especially the acts part of it mm. i think that is a recurring theme when they ask you what are the provisions in ndma act mm. i think if you see the question and if you prepare it like that i think that what i usually suggest is that every year uh, you uh, what do you call ndma comes up with uh, guidelines on each correct i think the last one was uh, that uh, glacial outburst yes right yes. And, and these things come these things come yeah inclusive so, growth economy yes. Yes. recurring team recurring team recurring right. team yes border management left wing extremism cyber Definitely. security cyber security if you see is a question in every year every year, right. every year. So that's without marks or 15 marks there that are free marks free honestly free marks you have to at least write three to four questions on every other cyber security theme okay. one is the infrastructure that is there in india one is the threats challenges threats emerging challenges yeah. and then you can answer yeah. anything that upsc will throw at you yeah right. uh, you can write a good model answer in anything irrigation models uh, food Correct. processing that is food processing very important very again. very very, very repetitive important. very repetitive so right. if you see gs3 there would be six to seven bounces every year right. this time also they were there s400 S four hundred was a bouncer. Yeah. LED. Uh, that question. Uh, the LED one. No, there was an LED. LED one, LED uh, one in which they were for twenty fourteen Nobel right, Peace right. Prize. A uh, Nobel Prize. Sorry. Uh, there was that uh, GDP computation methodology Again, question. That was yeah. little old. You would have probably got it because you started a little earlier. Uh, no, I use my prelims knowledge for that. Right, right, right. Because. Uh, no, but but that was something that nobody was expecting. It's at least five six years old. Correct. Right. No, so uh, yeah, correct. But uh, in twenty eighteen, because when I started, no. So this was one of the things that was there at that point of time. Yeah, in twenty eighteen, it was there. So I just remembered the formula, and then based on that formula, you build I made on top theory. of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. Then I made the theory out of it. But again, a bouncer question. And a lot of uh, static questions are that I think K shape recovery uh, was there this yes, year. Yes, K shape right? recovery. K-shape K-shape recovery there, yeah. was there, right? But I think that must have been covered by May sixty five. No, I think we, we have affairs, also covered yeah, as the as current as affairs understand. and right. the uh, test series. I think that was a predictable question from there. because covid impact on economy right, right. was a predictable environment is an extension of paper one geography it's, it's an extension yes so both right. have to be clubbed together and studied if you have to score more in paper 3 what would you suggest 
sir it would be difficult because uh, there would be bouncer questions bouncer. right so i think that is why paper 3 marks are deflated for every last 3 years it's low it's low it's right. low uh, so i think uh, improvement in paper 3 uh, the uh, at the marks that i am in would be a little difficult for myself right. because i am not able to predict at least 6 to 7 questions in the paper right. in pa- in gs 1 or 2 i can predict and i can prepare so that. basically the predictability yeah. of themes in 1 and 2 is better it's compared higher to paper than 3. gs 3 yes right. definitely it's makes higher. sense yes sir. right so uh, ethics that's a different story right yeah, yes, sir, yes. <laughs> how have you been doing ethics uh, last 4 years like i think uh, in my first two attempts my score was not that good in uh, I think my first attempt I scored around 90 marks and my second 125 but that was that year right where people when were Vishaka went up to 162 yes. right mm-hmm. so I'm assuming th- but uh, last year I I did uh, recently uh, I did decently well I scored around 109 110 110 that yeah. year I think the highest was 130 uh, Sarthak uh, had but that was an exception exception if you see even Shubham no, there, there Kumar was a, there was a, this girl uh, Divya Mishra was there at 128 or 129 yeah, yeah, yeah. few yeah. people about 124 few people right yeah, few people so I did reasonably this year is crazy rank one has 137 something yeah. and the next highest is 1 10 12 marks uh, below that yeah see now these, these are all anal- analysis post analysis <laughs> right, right right but basic strategy to follow an ethics paper i feel is that and that that has worked with many people including myself is that uh, you have to take out keywords from the syllabus from right. ethics once those keywords are out then you have to uh, take one or two pages per keyword in that you have to write a standard definition of that keyword second thing is the example part example part so example, and diversify the examples yeah so example can be done under three themes one is then administrative example which i governance sh- related governance related administrative uh, which is actually the demand of the question i feel in upsc second can be a personal example but make sure that personal example is not too unrelatable to the exam right third or thing or too unrealistic or too unrealistic yes and third thing is a little spiritual example if 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 mythology you use mythology you can use any uh, anything, yeah right. anything you can use so jain philosophy is constantly used uh, correct right. anekantva right, and all right. of that so if uh, every uh, keyword must have these three kind of examples with it along with uh, that i have been suggesting one more thing mm-hmm. keep a quote ready correct right yeah. that that, yeah. that, that, that uh, that's a pillar everywhere like you know yeah you can definitely do that right. uh, you can keep a quote ready but all this should be in your one or two pages, pages only yeah. which you can revise regularly multiple times multiple right. times along with that one more thing is the graphs that you can use in ethics so suppose i give this example everywhere suppose uh, if i have to show a, a relation between aptitude and integrity so i, I definitely use a graph where obviously like quadrants plus plus right. minus minus and somebody who has both aptitude and integrity would have that dedication to public service suppose they don't have aptitude but only integrity then there would be no innovation or or a venn diagram where it is or a venn diagram yes 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 so anything like that must be there in your notes first you don't right. have to innovate in the paper itself no i, I think this time we have uh, yaksh rank 6 he mm-hmm. said he made a lot of diagrams and correct so that created it. yes yes so that strategy definitely works so for every keyword you need to have these kind of things in one or two pages once that is done this is the static part you have to re- keep revising it keep revising it and the case study i feel that uh, the structure that it should be written is the first para or three two three lines must be addressing the problem that is addressed in the case study you're so setting a context setting a context so for example it can be a personal versus professional ethics issue it can be a corporate governance issue multiple issues can it can be an environmental issue so you can start your case study by writing that the above case study deals with so and so issue this is in the context of correct correct right. that only two three lines not right. more than that then you should start with your what driver is asked uh, in the case no study. stakeholders no, no if it is asked then definitely you no, other than that as an extension of introduction no yeah then just don't make it very monotonous right. that if even if it try different things try different, different things because right. in uh, two or three case studies it will be asked explicitly another rule i keep is that if the number of sub question is two or more or three or more don't play with the don't play with it yeah, yeah yeah you have any way enough things to write correct you have enough sometimes you have these case studies where there's only one question then you then can you have to innovate play yeah then right. you can play then right. whatever you want to say. because for you have to fill four right, pages right, at right. the end of the day so uh, once that part is addressed then at the end in the conclusion part i always used to write that by doing the above steps i have ensured yeah that person has ensured whichever is so there's a conclusion there's a conclusion right. that this person has ensured that he is emotionally intelligent or whatever the solution yeah, we that. had some uh, different ideas others have tried like mm-hmm. you know uh, there was one of the toppers who had mugged up all the motors of all the services satya me vijete uh, and they used that as a definite anything, right, anything. Right. but they should be in your notes, notes not on the final day you have yeah, to yeah th- that's what i keep telling people that yeah. you may have great notes but if it's not in your answer it's irrelevant yeah it's irrelevant right, correct right. and i also used to uh, liberally use all the constitutional articles in my case studies okay so suppose i'm 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 uh, stating something that i'll do 
or suppose there's a question on environment i will definitely use dpsp somewhere right. because that is that is part of our constitution right. or right. if any example from my static part that i can use in my case study right. that interlink i used to make so i think that helped me case study first or part a first no no for ethics i used to go from question 1 question but one. but i i used to make sure that i, I, I know a lot of people who start with case studies then spend yeah, 1 hour 45 minutes there and then come to the part a with no time no no so uh, you don't have to compromise any part because right. you never know which part will fetch you marks right. you have to give time to every question otherwise uh, if if suppose suppose i have only 2 minutes for the last question right. so it's not just last question that is compromised there are two three chain questions that have right. been compromised and then the evaluator goes with the bias after that correct right. correct right. so let's not uh, like uh, fix any time I, I personally per feel that you know uh, for part A there is a question and there is an answer that you can write Correct. for part B it's your opinion versus the evaluator's opinion Correct. in that given situation definitely yes. and that can go anyway you yes, you yes, never yes, know yes, right yes. code based questions in ethics three questions hmm. so code based questions i used to start with <coughs> first uh, telling what that code means right. according to me right. because what more you often understand. than not yeah more often than not there would be some code which we haven't heard right. so there cannot be a hundred codes that you practice right. no, you just practice the test uh, test papers for that and whatever you understand with that code you write whatever the application of that code in administration is right. you write that also right. if, if it is an open ended question if there is a specific de demand then please address that but if there is a specific uh, uh, if there is an open question then you definitely uh, write what are the application of that code in administration and then you go forward as the code is so then you then you see what you can write and then you end right. the question uh, use of keywords all this ontological deontological did you used to do all those things it depends on the demand of the question if it is a static uh, question then you use it but if it's a so i i read sarthak agarwal's copies for this and he up adopted a very practical approach to right. writing answers there were no uh, Technical such, technicality but there were very practical examples in that so i think that uh, same same was said by yaksh also this time that you know keyword you or kuch nahi yeah. straight forward straight forward and use as many practical contemporary examples yeah right definitely uh, update it uh, keep updating it for example uh, uh, for uh, compassion i used to have some different example but after covid Uh, Delhi police employed all the unemployed sex workers in right. uh, Delhi for making diyas during Diwali. Right, right, right. Now that's that's a, a, that's that's a different a that's a different one also. Yeah, that's a different one also. People will not use it, but it also hits the point. Jain had said something very nice last year. Mm -hmm. He said he kept a world map and he took some examples from Latin America and some from Middle East. Can, and yeah, definitely. So he felt that you know his answers would give a fresh perspective to the evaluator. Correct. But uh, all this get uh, practice in your test is and get it evaluated, evaluated also, so that you don't you get a perspective. The, yeah, you you don't go in the wrong direction. Right, right. Every innovation is respected unless and until it's fetching you. It's too much, sir. Yeah. I, I had a student whom I asked to draw a diagram and he put an eye on top of each heading and like you know this is not uh, what no, we want. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So all these you know. Questions need to be practiced first. Right, right. Governance questions in uh, like a dam is being constructed. What do you do? Uh, ethics. Again, very practical approach. Right. Uh, whatever the question is, just talk to yourself as an administrator and based. What on would the you do? So in, in yeah, what, yeah exactly what would you do but based on a certain set of procedures right you cannot be very utopian in your answer writing you have to be idealistic in ethics but also give practical implementable solutions i hmm. think that also that, that works yeah right. that works you did not get butchered in a essay yeah <laughs> right i, I think that that idea. helped you had 131 131 that's a decent score yes sir. how has your uh, essay trends marks trends been sir i have always scored higher on the higher side in the essay right uh in my first attempt i scored around 150 marks uh in that uh, year also essay was butchered then uh, i mean i'm forgetting the marks exactly but i but it has always been above average, average. Above average right, yes right. this year 131 is an above average above score. average score yes sir right. so uh, in this sir in essay my strategy what are the topics you wrote uh, sir the first uh, the first i wrote uh, self discovery has been technologically outsourced outsourced and the second i wrote there are better practices to best practices best, best, which best. i thought was the easiest of the eight right. yeah 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 you did not fall for the cradle question <laughs> right. no i didn't even understand the that was very question. risky yeah right. somebody later told me that it's a question on women women feminism and, like, and uh, yeah, motherhood yeah. and correct. things so like that i'm like right. i was grateful that right. i did you did not do that yeah i, I thought that this is and i think one uh, common uh, theme among people who scored less in essays that that they have chosen one of those essays right you know yes uh, right yes sir one so uh, choice of topic is always very important. important very important so i used to give a considerable amount of time because essay is a paper where you can give time right. and no no aspirant will say that 
ऐसे में टाइम कम पड़ गया दैट इज नॉट यू जस्ट हैव टू राइट 3000 वर्ड्स करेक्ट और 2500 वर्ड्स इन 3 करेक्ट करेक्ट सो एंड इन जीएस यू राइट 5000 वर्ड्स सो टाइम इज नॉट अ फैक्टर टाइम इज नॉट अ फैक्टर स्पेशली इन एसए पेपर सो आई यूज्ड टू डिवोट टाइम टुवर्ड्स फर्स्ट चूजिंग द टॉपिक एंड सेकंड मेकिंग द स्ट्रक्चर राइट बिकॉज़ वंस यू हैव मेड द स्ट्रक्चर देन राइटिंग द एसए बिकम्स इजीयर एंड दैट कैन बी अ लिटिल मैकेनिकल बट ऑल द इनोवेशन नीड्स टू बी इन योर स्ट्रक्चर पार्ट राइट so i used to devote around 20 25 minutes doing this right uh, first choosing the topic then making the structure and then writing the essay. innovation means do you have an example of uh, so i used to use anecdotes very liberally in mm. my essay and all these anecdotes i would have pre prepared okay uh, popular culture literature cinema no so i in my every essay i used to always include uh, so for example if there's an essay on uh, suppose women in power right, right? So I used to always use an example of a tribal girl in northeast right and I used to somehow empower her right and I used to start like a story that, like a story anecdote yeah right. like a half page story right. not more than that but I used to somehow empower her or if if a question is on digital technology right so I somehow used to empower a northeastern tribal girl on how technology has helped her, her and her life um, right. been made easier so i used to start my essay from that then i used to give a linking para that the above anecdote reflects how this right. this, this thing can happen and then i used to start, start my dimension spellage model uh, can be used but uh, in you philosophical essay no no i have done when the essay is static static but when the essay is philosophical then i used to uh, hand pick what all dimensions can be applied on that essay mm. so then i used to in my structure for example this time the first essay that i wrote that technologically outsourced, outsourced. One. now this model was not actually uh, getting very uh, fi- it was not fitting in that essay so then i made new dimensions then and there for example uh, how we now know how much our heartbeat is from uh, fitbit or uh, apple right, watch right. so this is how i thought that essay meant Right. that how we have we are depending on technology for everything everything our our uh, sleeping drinking water cycles, everything. everything everything is now technology outsourced so i used it and then i uh, also expanded it on the diplomatic part that how international relations are being uh, defined by how technology transfer is happening right so how this is also every for example israel as a country it's a small country right. but because it's technologically so Advanced. powerful there uh, aspirations and that is on different level, different level. so there is a, a right. realization self realization is also because of technology right. so i use all these dimensions somehow use of titles in essay subheadings no sir i don't used to do free flowing essay free flowing essay uh, just that para should uh, look that uh, that para is ending and the new one is uh, starting language ideation more important or content more important only content sir content. i think very normal language it should right. not look like a very broken language right. a normal you should be able to express your idea express your idea uh, flowery words seldom help in right, this right, exam right. i feel so i think normal uh, language but strong message should be the motto in essay do you bring back your anecdote to conclude it or bring it back in other parts of the essay also i i used to do that right. uh, so for example if i mentioned the girl there then in somehow or some dimension i used to say ki uh, just as lakshmi she would have helped just yeah, as just as lakshmi mentioned in the anecdote before Uh, this could also help million other girls, girls like that right. so i used to keep referring to it but only only two to three times not more than that what would be a good strategy for essay so first is uh, so suppose if we are talking about a static essay so i think uh, the yojana magazine the first page is a editor's note i think only one that page uh, needs to be studied so for 12 months there will be 12 pages to 12 study pages. in that because that editor uh, whoever the respectable editor is they have mentioned everything that is there in that book in, book. in a free flowing four to five paragraphs right so i think that more really of a helps. summary more of a summary so i think that really helps in understanding first what is there in the topic and second how to write that in four to five paragraphs right. so i think those 12 pages could be studied apart from that when whenever we are studying gs it is actually we are preparing how many essays years. between prelims and mains so every week one paper of essay one that is two essays two essays yeah yeah so right. every week one so mm-hmm. that you have to do also it's not very uh, mentally tiring like a gs answer because again it's it's free essay. flowing it's free flowing so and write more philosophical that. essays yeah yeah more philosophical also one more thing is uh, research a little bit to find that previous year how many people scored very high marks in essay they might not be top 50 people no yeah, that, yeah. that's what i keep telling that yeah. you know don't go by the rank go by so the marks don't go by the rank only go by the marks specifically in essay paper and also if you're looking at somebody's paper look at the paper that has been written in that year when they have secured that exactly. is also important exactly yes and uh, the how how their practice essays looked like right, right. because 
even though the coaching institute might not have given high marks to them but upsc has rewarded them we gave you 120 i believe uh, one i was looking yeah. at one of the papers it was yeah. not our highest scores but it yeah, was yeah. better no, but i think that was not a very good essay from my right, 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 right. yeah because i was you have written a better one at upsc yeah, yeah i have i've written a better one yeah i feel that so those those people need to be researched it can be a 250 rank 300 500 irrespective of the rank read those essays somehow right. if you can, i mean uh, institutes can help finding right. those people but i think essay strategy those essays should be read it helps you were part of our mainstreaming test series you have yes. written almost 8 to 9 yes, papers sir. yes this is something that we find common among people who score ranks they write what they join a lot of people join but they don't write enough do you think uh, your strategy towards answer writing has changed over the years have you written more in sub- subsequent years uh not more but uh, because uh, so since my first attempt i have been clearing mains so my strategy has been to write answers, write answers. because mains you have to labor you have because that's how you're being labor. tested yeah because that's how you've been ta- tested and also because you have to train your muscle memory like right. that because there would be lesser time to think more time to uh, more time devoted towards writing so i think brainstorming and writing answers writing test series and when you write test series you get it evaluated, evaluated. prelims in prelims you can definitely check your answers that's right or wrong right or wrong interview nobody can help right. like that but in mains it's in your hand right. entire mains is you in your you need to get a perspective on what Correct. could have been done differently and they, and in mains effort is directly replicated in your marks answers yes so more effort you put in mains more marks you'll get definitely it is not true in prelims or interview but in mains this so is what would be a right number of uh, full test between pre and mains what so did you do last year i think every 3 4 days you have to write one full length so test so that's 15 to 20 papers yes so i think this is the this is this should be the optimum level but also you have to ensure in, include optionals also optionals also so i think when you're writing 15 gs you have to include at least 10 optionals 10 optionals also. yes right. because i i also think that you know when you write 15 20 uh, tests a lot of themes will get repeated in mains correct that's as, another factor as it is yeah it it happened with me as i told right. you also it happened with me that some questions i felt i i just have to write again what i actually already and if you're writing it the second time definitely you're going to write a better yes, answer yes right? definitely that, definitely that you'll include all the you'll not make the same mistakes that you did before that's the post test analysis yes that yes, that that, that, that has to be done irrespective of prelims or mains that's right. post test analysis and so i always tell people that so there there's this distance between your answer and a model answer you have to keep reducing that reducing distance that. every day right. so ultimately if you reach a close to that then you'll get rewarded and i i think uh, incremental improvement is what you can expect you can't Definitely. expect overnight no, magical no, no. changes no, right? that will never happen in right, this right, right. Yeah. so uh, sociology you tried something different this year uh, right you have improved almost 50 marks also yes sir what what was that so this year what i tried to do was first i followed uh, jagrate swasthi ma'am's uh, last year all india rank 2's uh, strategy in which she actually wrote uh, sociology answers there was sociological bent but pattern was very similar to gs more points uh, three three lines uh, uh, points and then more points so i think i followed one that and second thing is i thought that i knew the theory but somehow i was not being able to replicate it in the two pages in the exam so i made all my notes as i was writing an answer on that topic so suppose there was one topic i thought that if a question is asked suppose just define this topic in two pages i only used to do that so ultimately i changed my note strategy and my notes only had every topic two to three three pages which i used to write so i think that helps so that notes helps. is a very essential yes. part very essential yes essential part and how many tests for sociology you wrote so uh, this time i wrote around 8 to 10 tests 10 because tests. this time the time was lesser as compared right. to other means interview is what got you the rank uh, that's yes, what i would say that yes, you know sir, 192 definitely. marks uh, is a good score this year yes sir how was the score previous years and how did you reach 192 sir uh, it has been a roller coaster journey <laughs> right. honestly so the and most of the time you don't even know what worked yeah yeah, <laughs> right. yeah so in my first attempt i got 175 marks hmm. second attempt i dropped to 140 third attempt i again got 180 marks right. and this time i got 193 192 193 193 marks so i think i have seen all the spectrum <laughs> right. of interview now and you so you were saying that you had a similar board similar similar boards yes right. yes so the same the similar the same board that gave me 140 this time rewarded me <laughs> with 190 that, that's amazing right that, yeah yeah so right. i i think uh, maybe luck or maybe my all the experience. or the board member don't remember you right? you know that you have come there yeah right? you know, now maybe. this is subjective you cannot predict it so no, no, i no, think, that's yeah. when people get high marks they give the same reasons mm. to which they'll give the reasons when they get low marks yes, like you know definitely, that, that, yeah, that's yeah, what happens yeah, yeah. right but only one thing that i realized is interview preparation is as laborious as mains preparation right. where you have to take out keywords from your dafs right. and then you have to extensively make a question bank which can be asked 
and then after making the question bank you have to individually write answers right. based on what you are thinking because if you if you don't write answers first you will not prioritize your point and second you might end up saying something that can be politically incorrect also. incorrect right. so i think writing those answers will definitely help you and then it will help you remember also so in there in the quality of your answers will definitely better. improve and you'll come out as a very logical a and analytical fellow yes right. sir. yes sir. so uh, interview that that's it i i, I think uh, that's uh, with respect to the preparation how was your experience with uh, i i think this is the marketing part of this whole uh, interview i have tried to keep that out how was your experience with mainstreaming so i think it was a very pleasant experience because i have given many other test series also but i thought the level of answer correction at, at least the time that was taken to, for my answer correction i think that was quicker which helped me to fine tune my preparation right, as right, well right. so i think yeah in this sense i think shankar has really helped <laughs> right right thank you so much uh, anything you want to tell uh, if uh, like and I, i think this is a common question if you were to do this four years all over again what would you have done differently the first year no i think i would have done the same things right and i think i would have ended up where i am because i'm very ho- i'm very grateful where i went right, right right so i think i would have done this again because again i would just suggest this to every aspirant watching this that whichever topper you follow has gone through this process the struggle is part of this process and so it's real it's real it's right. real one or two toppers you might find who have l- done lesser struggle but more often than not everybody else has done struggle at some, some people point. show it some people don't show yes, it it's yes. there so you have to accept that this is part of the process and if you're struggling you're moving towards higher things in life right. so i think if you keep doing this and all the best to you that you'll also make such good ranks thank you so much it was very enlightening and uh, very useful right thank you thank you